Hey guys, and welcome back to the next video of our Kotlin multi-platform slash compose multi-platform playlist, in which you will learn compose and Kotlin multi-platform from the absolute ground up. And in this video, we will dive into practice. That means you will learn to build your very first Hello World Compose and multi-platform app, which will run on Android, which will run on iOS, and which will also run on desktop. Just web is actually a platform that this would also work on right now, but that I will not focus too much on in this playlist since it's still in alpha and very likely to change in future. And before you can even use Kotlin multi-platform on your machine, you need some pieces of software. That's on the one hand, Android Studio. So Android Studio is actually the main IDE we want to use for Kotlin multi-platform development and all the code we will write in this playlist will be written in Android Studio, at least most of the code. Then if you are using macOS and you also want to run your apps on iOS and or macOS, then what you need is Xcode. Xcode is Apple's IDE for everything that involves Apple development, so for macOS apps, for iOS apps and so on. That's pretty much just the Android Studio equivalent for the Apple ecosystem. And even though with Compose Multiplatform, we don't need to use Xcode a lot for iOS specific development, you will still need to install that since it comes with the whole Apple SDK with all those simulators you can run your app on with all those specific iOS versions you actually need to compile your apps and so on. So if you have macOS, you want to install Xcode and haven't done that yet, you need to go to the App Store, type in Xcode and just hit install. It's very easy. Then something I will assume you already have is the JDK, so the, so the Java Development Kit, which is just used to do all kinds of Java related development tests. For example, putting together a jar file or just running an Android app. Then what you need is the Kotlin multi-platform Android Studio plugin. So if you are here in Android Studio, then you have this plugin section or you just open your settings if you're already in an existing project in Android Studio. But you need to go to plugins, marketplace, and then type in Kotlin multi-platform. And then this plugin will pop up called Kotlin multi-platform mobile which is just needed in order to work with that. It comes with some additional templates you can directly use to uh, create new Kotlin multi-platform projects inside of Android Studio. So just install that. You probably need to restart your IDE and then you're good to start multi-platform development in Android Studio. And lastly, what is optional about what you can use in order to check if you installed everything correctly in order to run KMP or in order to use KMP for development, you can use your terminal and that also only works on macOS and install a tool called KDoctor. That's a tool that will analyze your current system and check if it's ready to use Kotlin multi-platform. In case you don't yet have that, you can install this with brew install in your terminal and then KDoctor. Once you have that, you can just type KDoctor, type enter, and it will scan your system and then let you know if there are any issues. You can see in my case, there is one issue that isn't a critical one. So it says CocoaPods requires your terminal to be using some kind of uh, encoding. CocoaPods is just the iOS specific dependency manager. We wanted to use only iOS libraries inside of Xcode. But in most cases, you really don't need that in Kotlin multi-platform. So I will just skip this issue here. But you can also see it will check your operating system. It will check if you have Java installed, if you have Android Studio installed, if you have Xcode installed. So everything you just need in order to uh, get started with Kotlin multi-platform will be checked here. Once you did that, you will find that in Android Studio, when you go to Project, create a new project, down below, there will be two new options. On the one hand, a Kotlin multi-platform library, nothing for us yet, and a Kotlin multi-platform app template. You might now think, let's do that and let's uh, click on this to actually create this uh, empty Kotlin multi-platform project, which also works. But at this point, at least when I record this video, this is not yet possible for Compose multi-platform. So if you also want to share UI across platforms, then this template will not allow us to do that by default. So we would need to set that up manually. Maybe if you watch this video in future, there might be an additional template here. I'm very sure that JetBrains will also add a Compose multi-platform template here in future. But for now, we only have a Kotlin multi-platform template without sharing the UI. However, you can still use uh, JetBrains official project wizard here. So on kmp.jetbrains.com, you will get to this website where you can give your project a name. So for example, here, uh, Compose multi-platform Hello World or so. Also make sure that you're choosing a proper package name here. So compose MP hello world. Then you can tick the platforms you want this to run on. By default, it's Android and iOS. In our example, we also want desktop. And make sure that you actually want to share the UI here. You can see that's still in beta at the moment where I record this video, but we want to use compose multi-platform. You could also make this work for web, as I said, and for server. So that would just 
come with a KTOR for server and backend development, so you could even share your Kotlin code with a backend. But in our case, let's focus on these three platforms, hit download, and then Google Chrome will download a zipped file, which includes your initial project. And this is now the file you can open in Android Studio and to get the empty Compose multi-platform project. That's what I will do. And then I will see you back in Android Studio. All right, there we go in Android Studio. This is what you will probably see once you opened the um, project you just downloaded. You can see um, a readme file will open up. We can close this because I will explain everything about the project structure you need to know in order to start using Compose multi-platform. So on the left, you can see we're currently in the Android view. So in the uh, project view that is optimized for Android development, we are not developing purely for Android. So I prefer to switch this to project for Kotlin multi-platform development. So we just see all the relevant folders as we will also see in our Finder or our Windows Explorer. So let's now take a look at what we have here and what this initial project gives us. And I will not go into every single little piece of file here, but only inside of the most important ones. So up here, we really just have some temporary cache files. Those folders aren't really important. They're generated during um, building or might just contain some kind of a configuration or so. We can ignore these. But the first important folder that stands out is this Compose app. So this is the folder that really contains our whole application's Kotlin source code. If we open that up, then you can see we have a build folder that's also just generated files. We can skip that and open the source folder. So source just contains all of our source code. And here we have four different so-called source sets. So a source set is in the end really just a container of code, in this case, for a specific platform, or more generally for a specific use case. So a source set could also just be something that contains only test code. So only automated tests that you wouldn't actually want to compile into your production build. And the same in Kotlin multi-platform, we have one such source set for every single platform we were targeting. So here for Android, for desktop, for iOS, and then we have this common main source set, which contains the code that's actually shared between all platforms. So if we have code that is really only specific to Android, and we only want to have that code on our Android app, we can put it in Android main. If we have code that applies to all platforms, if all of our applications, no matter what platform it's running on, might use the same type of database, then we can put that database logic inside common main. Or if we have specific UI components that look the same on all these different platforms we're targeting, we can also put these in common main. So in Kotlin multi-platform, this will usually be the biggest source set of these four. If we then have specific code that only applies to desktops, maybe if you want to change some kind of system setting that is only available on desktops that doesn't exist on mobile platforms, then that code would go in desktop main. And the same, obviously, for iOS. So I think that should be clear. What we'll then have are those two Gradle files. So we have build.gradle.kts here in our Compose app, and we have build.gradle.kts here in our root project hierarchy. If we open that up, then you can see here we have some, some kind of plugins. All those are Gradle plugins, where Gradle is really just the tool that um, runs all those little tasks in the right order that finally then package together our application for every single platform individually. So it's Gradle that will manage fetching the libraries, including that into your build, then building it, compiling your build, creating an executable file for iOS, for Android, and so on. So Gradle really just manages all that, controls all those little tools that need to be run in the right order in order to just run your app on each platform. And for this build process, we can just apply certain plugins. I won't go into this in detail here. So you can see we have a specific Kotlin multi-platform plugin. We have a Compose compiler plugin and so on. If you're familiar with Android development, then all that will not be new to you. What's more interesting here is actually the chop Gradle file, which is inside of our Compose app module. Let's open that and you can see this is actually a little bit bigger. And this is really the central place where we manage our build logic. So here we specify which platforms we actually target. So we have a JVM desktop target. So also for desktop development, we can either uh, use the JVM, which runs on Windows, Linux, macOS, but we can also uh, target the native platforms. So we directly compile our code into native binaries. So without using the JVM, both that is possible with KMP. Well, here we specify our Android target uh, with the configuration that we actually want to have for the uh, finally generated APK. So the executable Android app. Down here, we have our source sets block where we can manage our dependencies. So just our libraries want to include maybe only Android specific libraries. We would put these here in Android main dependencies. We could also do that for desktop specific libraries like here. And the same, of course, for our common main source set 
So all those libraries we want to share between all platform. And those libraries we include here in this common main block, they actually need to be a Kotlin multi-platform compatible libraries. So they need to be written purely in Kotlin and configured to run in KMP projects. Down here, we just have some additional Android config. You will also know this if you've uh, built Android apps before. So things like compile SDK, minimum SDK, target SDK, and so on. I won't explain all that in detail here. I have a bunch of videos on a greater config on my channel already for Android project at least. But this you of course can also manage here same for desktop. So for desktop, it's actually relevant that we have a specific main function as the entry point for our program. We need to specify that here for desktop apps. We can specify the target formats. So the executable files we want to get out of our Compose multi-platform app here for desktops. So just that you have an impression of what we can configure here in Gradle. Then we also have our iOS app folder here, which is actually a folder we don't want to touch in Android Studio, but this contains our native iOS code. So if you really want to write Swift code, which is the programming language for iOS apps, then you can also do that, but in Xcode. You can do so by just opening this iOS app folder, opening this Xcode product folder, and then you have this Xcode workspace file, which is really just a file that includes Xcode configuration, Xcode information. So you can open the project, the iOS specific project, in Xcode, run your iOS app there and so on. So you would just right click here, open that in Xcode, and then it will open in Xcode. But we can also run the iOS app here directly in Android Studio. I will show you that in a moment. Let's get to the exciting part. And that's actually making our Hello World app work. So here in Common Main, that's actually where we want to include that logic to display that Hello World text, because that is the same on all platforms. On all platforms, we want to display Hello World. So instead of having this text UI component implemented on each platform individually, we will just put that in our common main source set, implement it once, and then still use it on every platform. So here in common main, I want to open Kotlin, and then you will notice there are already three files. Let's ignore the greeting and platform KT file for now and just open the app file, since that will be the entry point of our application, at least in the compose sense. And here by default, we already have this uh, composable, which uh, the project wizard generated for us. Let's remove all that because I don't want to use this template. I just want to build a simple Hello World app with you. This is now the place where we put our Jetpack Compose UI code that applies to all platforms. And all we want to do is want to have a center text displayed on our screen. In order to center a text in Jetpack Compose, we can use a box. We can give this a modifier. And if you're new to Jetpack Compose, then I really recommend to watch my Compose Crash Course, since this playlist won't be a Compose playlist, uh, but it will teach you to use Compose for all platforms rather. In order to center a text in Compose, we can use a modifier, make sure that we fill the whole size of our screen with that box. And then we say all the content inside that box should be centered. So we set the content alignment to alignment.center and everything we now put inside of this block here will be centered on the screen. And that should be our Hello World text. So we have a text composable where the text is just hello world. And I would say we just try to run this. First of all, on Android, you can see I've selected my Google Pixel 6 device here. You can, of course, also use an emulator. We want to run the Compose app with this Android symbol. Click Run, and I will move over my running devices here so you can see that better. Uh, there we go. It's compiling. And once that compiled and built, I will see you back, hopefully, with a visible app. And there we go, our app opened. You can see it has Hello World. So on Android, we can already make it check. That's working. But the exciting part about KMP is now making that work on iOS and desktop, of course. Because for Android, the code really didn't look any different than this. And on Android, we can uh, we could always use Compose. That's nothing new. But let's see how we can make this run on iOS. For that, I will minimize that a little bit here. And in order to now launch that on a specific um, other platform, so not on Android, we can open the drop down here, click on iOS app. We can also check the configuration of our target here, of the iOS app target. Click Edit Configuration. And here you can then select the different options how you want this to run. So, for example, which specific device or simulator, iOS it's called simulator, not emulator, um, which simulator you want this to run on. I've chosen the iPhone 15 with iOS 17.5. That's actually also the iOS version you need for uh, the current Compose multi-platform version. So you also need the latest Xcode version, of course. So if you get some kind of build issue on iOS, it's very likely that your Xcode version is not up to date. But that looks good. So we can click OK, run this, and then Gradle will do its job. It will package our app together for iOS, and it will then launch our iPhone simulator. Let's wait until it actually installs our app here. 
it launches it and there's our hello world text on iOS as well. Isn't that super cool? We can now build iOS and Android apps all with Kotlin and Jaffa Compose, but we're not done yet. We also want to test that on desktop. So actually having a real desktop window that says hello world. Let's take a look at how we can do that. For that, we can minimize that a little bit, go inside of our desktop main source set, and here we will find this main KT file. Inside here, we will have the very basic raw code for desktop applications or compose desktop applications. We will really just call our application composable, which comes from the common main source set. So all these little source sets, iOS main, desktop main, Android main, can access the code from common main, of course, since that's the shared code. And this, if we command click into that, is just our shared compose composable that says hello world. I always had issues when we click run here, which should technically run our desktop app. Maybe it works now, but let's try this. Click run main KT. And you can see I actually get um, a German text for some reason, but it says that the main KT class was not found. Even though we actually specified that down here in our Gradle file. So we say, okay, we actually have the specific main KT class, which also comes with a template. So that's Definitely correct. I don't know what the issue is here. Maybe when you watch this video, um, that works for you and that's not an issue anymore. But at this present moment, it seems to be an issue. We can fix that by just going to our terminal and running this uh, desktop app from the terminal. Just make sure that you have this main KT run configuration selected up here because this is the target that will be run here if we execute that from the terminal. And we can do so by just saying dot slash Gradle W so or Gradle wrapper which lets us execute a Gradle task. And all we want to do is want to run this. Let's hit enter, it will build that. And if we move that over here, we see our Hello World desktop app. I personally love how easy that is. Of course, a few things still have their issues. Not every part of Kotlin Multiplatform is super mature at this point. You can see there are little issues with desktop development, with launching this in Android Studio, just having some kind of proper IDE support. But all in all, this is such a promising technology and I'm definitely looking forward to the future of it. But that is, of course, just the very start of this playlist. We will do a lot more exciting stuff in this playlist later on. So definitely stay tuned. And if you want to learn how you can build a full Kotlin multi-platform project, check the first link in this video description because I have a full course about that already. Thanks for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.